Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Michael. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you, a joy to be with you tonight. Thank you, Paul, for inviting me tonight. Um, this is my daughter, Maria. She's going to help out uh, with uh, the slides here tonight. Um, Barb, that was a tremendous reflection on Our Lady of Knock. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, uh, and I'm going to continue along some of the same lines tonight uh, in, our, in our discussion here. Um, this, tonight we're, we're going to talk about the gift of the Blessed Mother. And uh, can we pray just quickly? Um, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. In the Blessed Mother, Mary, we entrust this evening to you. We entrust ourselves completely to you. As we pray, Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight, I would um, like to focus and really draw out something that uh, one of my dear friends, Shane Kaplan, who was here last month, uh, if some of you were here uh, for his talk. Um, he had a recent interview uh, on uh, the Alcresta show. And in that, uh, in that interview, uh, in the context of talking about his book, uh, The Biblical Roots of Marian Consecration, he spoke about Jesus from the cross, um, saying to the Blessed Mother, Woman, behold your son. And to St. John the Beloved, behold your mother. And I'll just read that passage. It's from St. John chapter 19 verses 26 through 27. When Jesus saw his mother, and, and these are words very familiar to us, but, um, but there's, there's more. Um, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his heart. It's the next line that, when Shane talked about this in the interview, uh, it really struck me. And, and, and the next line is this. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, after this, knowing that all was now finished, Shane, Shane read that passage on the air, and it just hit me like lightning. Um, and I, I began to began to cry, um, quite honestly. Um, and I had never really um, thought about that passage very much. Um, and and what Saint John was was trying to teach us there, and trying to tell us. And if we think about our own death or the death of, of someone that we know um, who is close to us, we. We would want to say the absolute most important things on our deathbed, um, and or, or listen really closely to the person whom we, you know, that we love very much, as they tell us their treasured parting words. Saint John, you know, said that after G Jesus entrusted him to the Blessed Mother, all was now finished. That Jesus, from his deathbed gave St. John and each one of us to the Blessed Mother as our mother. He gave his mother to us. Um, that's the last gift before he died. Um, Pope St. John Paul the Great uh, said the following in his general audience from April 23rd, 1997. He said, in fact, after Jesus' statements to his mother, the evangelist adds a significant clause, Jesus knowing that all was now finished, as if he wished to stress that he had brought his sacrifice to completion by entrusting his mother to John and in him to all men, 
whose mother she becomes in the work of salvation. John Paul II, St. John Paul II, puts a very special emphasis on this passage of scripture for what is called Marian entrustment or consecration. And Pope Benedict XVI um, says the following about this same passage in uh, his second volume of his Jesus of Nazareth trilogy. This is one of Jesus' final acts, an adoption agreement, as it were. From that time onward, John is responsible for her. He takes her to himself. The literal translation is stronger still. It could be rendered like this. He took her into his own received her into his inner life setting. So Pope Benedict is saying, you know, the Blessed Mother is given to John and given to us to be, um, to really enter into her prayer and to be, for her to be a part of our interior life. Um, and what are some of the ways that this entrustment can be carried out, especially I'm thinking in the mind of St. John Paul II, who has a very particular history from which to draw in his native Poland, um, and in times of really raging crisis. Um, we, we've, uh, we know of very difficult times in the church, and um, I, I, I wanna, one of the things I'd like to do here tonight is go over some of these historical examples so that we um, so that we can look back upon them and draw and really draw hope from them um, when, all, when all hope appears to be lost you know, what should we do uh, and what lessons can we learn so some of these historical examples um, the, the first one and again I, I, I'm focusing on what would be in the consciousness what would be in the mind of st. John Paul II so these are gonna be drawn from Poland, really, mostly. Um, and are, is anyone familiar with Jasna Gora and the image of Our Lady of Częstochowa? The blind Madonna? Yes, exactly, it's right here, right here. This is from the, the chapel. Paul gave me permission to bring, uh, to bring the image in here. Um, there's a long history associated with this image, and I, I can't go into all that long history tonight, but, um, if you have time or if you have the inclination, check it out because it's amazing. And there's a book on it, on this also. It's called the um, the Glories of Jasna Gora and Our Lady of Częstochowa. I think that the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception uh, published. Uh, so that's that's a, a one great book to, to for a reference. But um, so so Jasna Gora is this is the uh, the picture of it here, and it's. English translation for Yasnagor is the bright mountain, the bright mountain. And the image of Our Lady of Częstochowa is in Yasnagor. That's her home uh, there, there in, in Poland. And this is really considered to be the center of the culture in Poland, the center of um, the Catholicism in Poland. Um, again, a very, very long and storied history associated with this image. And what the Lord does through the Blessed Mother in Poland. And consequently, for the rest of the world. Um, as, so I want to go through a, a few of these examples, historical examples. The first one is from 1655. And um, this is the defense of Jasna Gora during the Swedish deluge. There were Protestant Swedes that had invaded Poland in 1655, and they occupied almost the entire country. And they came to Jasna Gora, and um, they were they had surrounded it. And inside Jasna Gora, there was a, a priest um, who was the prior of the monastery at that time, and he had few dozen monks with him and a, a handful of soldiers and townspeople that were defending uh, the Bright Mountain. And 
the Swedes had 12,000 people. 12,000. And they had really powerful cannons. The prior and the individuals in Yasnagora prayed to our mother of Chen Stahova and during these attacks there are historians who have uh, who've, who've talked about this apparently the Swedes at certain points in the fighting would see a lady in blue a blue cloak um, over Yasnagora and she was protecting her mountain and um, the, the bullets would be thrown back into the enemy camp when they shot them. I mean, this is just amazing. Uh, this is an amazing, amazing uh, um, historical example. And they, the Swedes eventually abandoned Yasnagora and left on Christmas Day. After, um, after the defense of Yasnagora, the king of Poland, his name was uh, King Jan Kazimir, in 1656, so just, just right after this, he goes to the cathedral in Lwów, and I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, he goes to that cathedral in the presence of his own queen, and he basically consecrates himself, or trusts himself to the Blessed Mother and makes her the queen of Poland in this ceremony. Just amazing. I mean, this is totally amazing. Um, so that's that's the first example. The second one is um, the Battle of Vienna. Have any of you heard of the Battle of Vienna or know the story of that? Um, this is this is also an amazing story. The first, so the first story we talked about the Protestant Swedes who invaded. The second one, the second story here is about the Muslim Ottoman Turks who were intent upon taking over Europe. And um, they laid siege to Vienna, Austria, with about 150,000 soldiers. So they first were going to take Vienna and then go into the rest of, of Europe to try to take over. Blessed Pope Innocent XI rallied Poland, Germany, and France in, in, a, in an army. And it was King Jan Sobieski, the king of Poland, who led 40,000 soldiers down to Vienna. Before they went there though, before they went down there, he took them to Yasnagora. And they entrusted themselves to the Blessed Mother. The men prayed the rosary on their way down to Vienna and arrived on September 11th and began the massive of the Muslim Ottoman Turks, which ended on September 12th. And there was a feast day that was instituted because of that victory, the holy name of Mary, on September 12th. So once again, 150,000 soldiers, just the odds look you know, vastly outnumbered, 40,000 soldiers against 150,000, and they, they crushed them and saved Europe. Third historical example, 1920, the Battle of Warsaw, or also called the Miracle of the Vistula. So the first, first example, we have the Protestant Swedes. Second example, we have the Muslim Ottoman Turks. Third example, we have the Russian communists who invaded Poland in 1918 with the intention of taking the entire country and the rest of Europe. Pope Benedict XV asked that all Catholics pray for the Poles and the Polish people began a novena beginning on August 6th, 1920, again entrusting themselves to the Blessed Mother. The Polish army crushed the Red Army nine days later at the end of the novena on the feast of the 
Assumption of Mary, August 15, 1920. In, uh, the, uh, there's, a, there's a book called uh, The Culture of the Incarnation uh, by uh, my, a friend of mine, Tracy Rowland, who's gonna be, we'll be holding a conference for her in November, or she'll be here. Um, in that book, she has an essay called um, uh, Poland and Communism for Those Too Young to Remember. And in that book, she says this about the Battle of Warsaw. In accounts of the Battle of Warsaw, reference is always made to the fact that troops on both sides believed that they were seeing visions of Our Lady in the sky. And it is agreed that this made the Poles fight harder and that it scared the Bolsheviks. It scared the, the communists. So the point of emphasis here is that the atheists, the communists, were seeing the Blessed Mother in the sky. And they were scared. Um, the, the, the communists surged years later, again, after World War II, and, and, and eventually took over Poland and horribly persecuted Catholics for several decades. But what, so what this teaches us is that, is that there, there's a need for repeated consecrations to the Blessed Mother, and the crosses are going to continue to happen. And those crosses are going to deepen our union with the Lord, and the Blessed Mother is there to help us through them. On June 4th, 1979, before the image of Our Lady of Częstochowa, Pope St. John Paul II uh, made an act of consecration to her during his famous nine days in which he came back to his homeland. He reminded his fellow Poles of who they were. And there was a song here tonight uh, that talked about remembering who we are in the first part of it, the, the is it rebuild, the rebuilder. Uh, I love that. Um, John Paul II is very, has a gift to help us, help remind us who we are. And he did that with his native, uh, his fellow countrymen. And that ignited a prayerful and entirely peaceful Christian offensive against communism that eventually brought it down. And at, on June 4th, he said this, it is no wonder then that I too should come here today I have, in fact, taken with me from Poland to the chair of St. Peter in Rome, this holy habit of the heart, which has been built up by the faith of so many generations, has been tested by the Christian experience of so many centuries, and is deeply rooted in my soul. And then he said later also in that same address, I am a man of great trust. I learned to be so here. The Solidarity Movement was born from John Paul's visit in June of 1979, and over 10 years later, the Berlin Wall fell and communism was defeated peacefully. In that act of consecration to Our Lady of Częstochowa, John Paul II said these words to our Blessed Mother. How meaningful for me always have been the words that your Son, born from you, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of man, spoke from the height of the cross, pointing out John, apostle and evangelist. Woman, behold your Son. In these words, I always found the place for every human being and the place for myself. Um, I'd like to also share with you uh, just, just a personal story um, regarding Marian entrustment. And uh, so several years ago, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law uh, had invited us to go through the 33 Days to Morning Glory program with Father Michael Gaiden. And has anyone gone through that or are familiar with that? I mean, there's some people here there uh, that went through that with with, uh, with us. And 
uh, it was so amazing to go through that program uh, and that, that consecration. And, um, and I see very, looking back upon that, I, I see that there were some really major fruits that came from that. And uh, I'm so grateful that we went through it and, um, and we learned so much with, with everyone. Um, the, one of the, a couple of the fruits have been just, I think for, for our family, uh, just a, a greater, uh, the ability to pray together as a family has been really uh, a fruit of that. And I think also uh, our institute, our Institute of Catholic Humanism that, that um, we were blessed to, to found and, and, are, and is going on, that I believe also was a, a fruit of that consecration. And the, the Blessed Mother just really, um, Barb, you said this earlier, she brings hope. And uh, when, when circumstances, and I hope these stories tonight can help us think about this, when things seem really bleak and really rough, um, we can turn to her and completely surrender ourselves to her. And that's what this entrustment really is about, this count Marian consecration, Marian entrustment. And the ways that we can do that are the 33 days to morning glory that we mentioned, that's one, one way to do it. Um, another way is the militia of the Immaculata from St. Maximilian Kolbe. Is anyone familiar with St. Maximilian Kolbe? Uh, amazing, amazing saint. Um, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the militia of the Immaculata. It's, a, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, that's, a, that's a second way to consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Mother. A third way is uh, through uh, St. Louis de Montfort. Um, and, and in, in his works, he outlines um, a, a consecration to the Blessed Mother also. Um, if you are interested in hearing more about the biblical roots of Marian consecration, um, please feel free, we would love for you to join us for a, con for a conference hosted by our Institute of Catholic Humanism entitled A Morning in the Hearts of Jesus and Mary. And these, this will be two talks by Shane Kaplan. Um, he's going to present, be presenting on that book and also on Jesus' heart, the source of Catholic prayer. And that's going to be held at uh, St. Peter Parish in St. Charles on the Memorial of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, June 17th, coming up uh, uh, shortly. And that's 9 a.m. to noon that morning. Um, and um, I have discussion questions if we want to move into discussion. Or, sure. Paul, what's the best? Is that, is that good? Yeah.